Today we're talking about one of the most underutilized treatments for sleep disorders and mood, and that is bright light therapy. If you are a doctor or a therapist who is ready to up-level your sleep medicine knowledge, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel. This channel is all about really practical, simple, easy to implement tools to help your patients sleep better in your clinical practice, because most of us get very limited training in sleep medicine. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I'm a physician specializing in integrative psychiatry and sleep medicine. Every video is eligible for CME credits. So watch all the way to the end and then go to the video description under this video to grab your CME credit. Okay, so let's jump in. What exactly is light therapy or bright light therapy? Light therapy is known as phototherapy. It's a non-pharmacologic treatment involving daily exposure to bright light and it's commonly administered using a light box or other devices. So the sun is actually the best source of light therapy. Its positive effects on sleep and mood have been recommended recognized for centuries, but a light therapy device is the next best thing to the sun. Bright light therapy was initially developed in the 1980s as a treatment for seasonal affective disorder. And since then, it's been used for a variety of other conditions as well, including non-seasonal mood disorders like depression and also sleep disorders, circadian rhythm disorders, and others. Light has physiological effects on the circadian system, on the sleep system, it affects serotonin levels, and you can see here a schematic of how light enters the eye, how it hits the retinal ganglion cells, and then that goes down the retinohypothalamic tract and sends a signal to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is our central pacemaker, and this has an impact on melatonin and cortisol, and then this has downstream effects as well on other systems. So if you want to pause the video here, you can take a closer look at the diagram. Here is a visual of the circadian rhythm. So often when our patients hear about the circadian rhythm, they're thinking it in terms of sleep. Now, yes, the circadian rhythm does influence sleep, but it has multiple other effects as well. The circadian rhythm regulates various aspects of our physiology and our health. Beyond sleep, it affects alertness, reaction times, body temperature, blood pressure, cortisol release, melatonin secretion, metabolism, and so on. Exposure to light in the morning signals the brain to increase the body temperature to suppress melatonin and release cortisol, and this helps to improve alertness. On the flip side, darkness exposure in the evening enhances melatonin production and it signals the brain to reduce the core body temperature, which in part helps to facilitate sleep onset. So as you can imagine, the timing of light exposure is really important. And oftentimes our patients will want to use their light therapy device in the evening or the late afternoon when it starts to get dark in the winter months, which intuitively kind of makes sense, right? But the timing is super important. If someone is using light therapy in the late afternoon or evening, Evening, it's actually going to push their sleep later, causing a phase delay, and it's going to make it harder for them to fall asleep. Now, this might be beneficial for people who are falling asleep too early or who are waking up too early, but for most people, they'll want to use their light therapy device in the morning. Morning light exposure pulls sleep earlier. It results in a circadian phase advance, so that means it helps people fall asleep earlier. And so this can be helpful for people who have trouble with sleep onset. So you definitely want to be asking your patients about the timing of light exposure, whether they're using a light box or if they're using natural light. I do encourage all of you as clinicians, whether you're using light therapy or not in your practice, to talk about the timing of your patient's light exposure as it is such a crucial factor in assessing a patient's sleep issues and also assessing issues with depression, fatigue, alertness, excessive daytime sleepiness, and so on. You want to get really curious about your patient's circadian rhythm because it does affect so many aspects of their health and well-being. So you want to understand the variability, the regularity, the consistency of your patient's light exposure, especially asking about differences on weekdays and weekends or work days and days off. This can give you a lot of really interesting and helpful clues when you're helping someone improve their sleep and energy. Light is a powerful intervention, but often underutilized. If information like this is helpful for you, then I invite you to get my free sleep mini course for outpatient doctors. It's called Sleep Medicine and pearls, and it's filled with lots of practical tips to use in your clinical practice. You can get it at intrabalance.com forward slash doctors, and the link is also in the video description underneath this video. Okay, so back to light therapy. There's three main factors you want to consider. These are the timing of light exposure, the intensity of the light exposure, and the duration of light exposure. The optimal 
optimal timing for most patients is going to be in the morning, especially before 10 a.m. And of course, this is going to be variable depending on your patient's own circadian rhythm, their schedule, and other factors. But for the vast majority of people, morning light exposure is what would be recommended. The recommended intensity of a light box would be somewhere between 7,000 to 10,000 lux, or LUX. That's the measure of intensity of the light therapy. And then most people are going to be using their light box for about 30 minutes. Now, this, again, could be variable depending on how intense the light therapy is, on how large the light therapy device is, on the patient's sensitivity to light. I have had patients become a little bit activated or agitated with too long or too intense an exposure to the light therapy device. So you're going to tailor this according to the patient's needs. But for most people, about 30 minutes is recommended. But here you can see different types of light therapy devices. There are light boxes, which is mostly what we've been talking about. And these come in different shapes and sizes, configurations and price points. There are wearables, so things like glasses or visors that the patient can actually wear. And this is nice for patients who are kind of active and they don't want to sit down in front of a light therapy device for 30 minutes. They can walk around and go, you know, make their coffee or do other things while they're wearing their visor or their glasses. There are desk lamps, which are just a little bit smaller and people can use on their desk. And then Dawn simulators are these essentially usually a globe shaped device that helps to simulate a sunrise in the bedroom. And this can be really helpful for people who have trouble getting up in the morning or have a bit of sleep inertia. But your patient can choose what type of light therapy device might be optimal for them. They might choose more than one depending on what they're using it for. Now, when your patient is purchasing a light therapy device, you want to ensure that it is designed for sleep and mood disorders. There's other types of light therapy devices out there that are used for dermatological conditions that would contain UV light. But for our purposes, we need the UV light to be filtered. So you want to make sure that there's no UV light emitted from the device and that it is specifically designed for mood and sleep disorders orders. Some considerations include adjusting the dose. So when I say dose, I mean the intensity and the duration of the light exposure depending on the patient's tolerance. So again, if they do experience some adverse effects like eye strain or irritability or a bit of headache, you can consider lowering the dose. So this could mean they use it for a shorter period of time. I've had some patients just use it for five minutes and that was enough and it gave them a good boost. You might consider putting it further away. If it is a light box, generally it's used about two feet away from the person. They don't look directly into it, just like the sun. You don't look straight into the sun. You might be surprised by how many patients actually look directly into the light box, which is not recommended. They can have the light therapy on. It should be in front of them so it bathes their face in light, but they shouldn't be looking into it. They can read, they can check their email or do other things while the light therapy device is on. You can reduce the intensity. Some devices have adjustments where you can change the intensity that is being emitted. So these are ways that you can adjust the dosing. Some people will notice improvements in their energy, their sleep cycles, their mood within the first few days or the first week. For others, it can take up to five weeks before they notice the benefits. If you're using a light therapy device for seasonal affective disorder, it's actually recommended to use it before the onset of symptoms. Doing so has been shown to help prevent symptom onset and also reduce intensity of symptoms. So you don't want to wait until they start experiencing symptoms of seasonal affective disorder, you can actually use it preemptively. And this is something that I also recommend to patients in my practice. And we touched a little bit on some of the adverse effects. One other thing you want to look out for is mania or hypomania. Light therapy is helpful for people with bipolar depression, but you have to use it very cautiously. The timing is really important. This is something that we go into more detail about in my clinical sleep kit program, but you want to use it with caution in patients who have a history of mania or hypomania. And then it's contrary indicated in patients with certain types of eye disorders, as you can see listed here. Do you ever use light therapy in your clinical practice? Are there any specific tips, tricks, favorite products that you like to recommend to your patients? I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below.